Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you to set up phpMyAdmin on a LAMP server. So phpMyAdmin is a really nice graphical front end for managing MySQL and other related database services. Uh, this can be very convenient if you wanna run a web app or build your own web app if you don't have a lot of SQL experience, if you're not fully comfortable with the SQL command line, it can really be a lifesaver and add some convenience uh, into your development workflow. So I'm gonna be installing this just on a standard LAMP server. It's running Ubuntu, uh, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, more or less kind of all unconfigured. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through kind of the basic basic steps to get phpMyAdmin up and running. If you were to buy web hosting or shared web hosting from a provider like Bluehost or HostGator or any of the number of common providers that are out there, this is probably already gonna be already be installed, but if you're setting up your own LAMP server, uh, like I'm doing for one of my classes or just at, for, at home or for work or for a business, uh, you're just gonna have just access to the SQL command line interface. And that might be great, again, if you have experience. Um, otherwise, it can be relatively intimidating. So phpMyAdmin is an open source uh, tool you can download from phpMyAdmin.net. Uh, it's written in, in PHP as you'd expect. So if you download uh, the source code, you can poke around with it um, and it can be a lot of fun. I'm gonna try to show you how to install this as easily as possible. Um, so I'm gonna be doing it using apt. And if you were to search for uh, installing phpMyAdmin with apt, you're gonna come across this nice uh, DigitalOcean's article right down here. And I'm gonna click on this one. Um, this works out pretty well because we are running Ubuntu uh, version 20.04. So we first want to make sure um, that our system is up to date. I already ran this, so we're good to go for that. And then we're going to install a couple of key components. Um, this is going to install, oh, geez, all these pop-ups. Uh, so things like uh, MB string, which is a module for managing non-ASCII strings and converts the strings to different encodings. Uh, PHP zip to allow PHP to work with zip files. Uh, GD, which allows for image support, so PHP can do cool things with images. JSON to allow PHP to work with JSON files and curl to allow PHP to interact with different kinds of servers um, using different protocols. So some important tools we're going to install. And of course, PHP my admin. So I'm going to run this command. Let's copy that to my clipboard. I'll hop over to my server, which I am SSH'd into. And I'm just going to paste that in. And this will take just a minute or so to install. And we are configuring this for Apache 2. And hopefully if all goes well, we're not gonna see uh, any error messages. Must have a database installed and configured before it can be used as optimally as handled with dbconfig-common. If you're advanced administrator, you can do this manually, yada, yada, yada. Otherwise, you should probably choose this option. Okay. Configure database PHP admin with dbconfig common. Yes. What should we set the password for MySQL? Go ahead and set a password. And that part is now done. So at this point, uh, we could continue on to the guide, but I just wanted to show you something. So phpMyAdmin is installed, and if you go back to your website or web app, you'll notice that by default, things kind of just look the same. Uh, but what had happened in the back end is essentially this application was set up and it was linked to just about every virtual host, we'll say, on the server. And if you were to go to your, your domain dot whatever, whatever, slash phpMyAdmin, it'll bring up a login page. Uh, so when you when you ran through that installation step, it had asked you to set a password. That password was for this phpMyAdmin user. Uh, by default, this user doesn't have a ton of permissions. So in order to make use of being able to do different things like create a database and all that fun stuff, we need to set um, this user to have privileges to be able to create databases and all that stuff. So um, I'll give you an example. If I were to sign in, using the password that I had created during the phpMyAdmin installation. And I go under databases and I try to create, uh, it's gonna say no privileges. So I'm gonna log out and then we're gonna fix that. Now the digital ocean guide covers a lot of different things. I'm not gonna necessarily go through this step by step, but I will show you down here. It kind of gives you the syntax to use to be able to 
grant permissions to the PHP My Admin user. This one goes uh, with a user named Sammy. Uh, ours is going to be PHP My Admin. And I don't know if there necessarily needs to be spaces here. There is, which is good. Just making sure there's a space in between all of us. Just going to copy that to my clipboard. So we are going to have to move into the command line for PHP My Admin. Uh, and to do that, we're going to do, which I'm just going to go back to the home directory, start fresh. We are going to do sudo mysql u root dash p. Uh, and you're going to type in your root password for MySQL. By default, there isn't one. So if you didn't set a root password, you might want to think about changing that. Um, and for this step, if you don't have one, you can just continue on. But I'll type in my root password. And now I'm into our command line environment. So, okay. I'm just going to right click and say paste clipboard. So grant all privileges to PHP my admin on this local MySQL server. Enter. All right, that's great. So now I can move back to PHP my admin, log back in. And under databases, look at that. I now am able to go through um, and create databases or mess with some of these existing ones, which again, I caution you to be very careful with. So let me give you an example. Let's say you wanted to install WordPress. Uh, what you could do in that case is make a database called, we'll say, WP for WordPress. And the database is now created. And one good practice I like to have is I make one unique user for each application. So if one application gets comped, um, then we know that the whole server isn't necessarily compromised, just hopefully that one application. So I'm going to go into privileges. And we can see here are users that have access to WP, including our essentially our two root users. I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call this user WP. Uh, I'm going to say, yep, this has access to this host, any host. Password. Uh, I'm just going to generate a password. Or, you know, I'll just do... Another password of my choice. I could use the generator. Should I use the generator? Yeah, I'll be good. I'll use the generator. I'm just going to copy this over here into my clipboard. Let's put that to the side for now. And now I am going to um, create the user. I have to actually make sure I scroll down. Uh, and I will give this user full privileges to this application. So I checked uh, all privileges and then I'm removing administrative privileges. So this user, we will still do things like create records, retrieve uh, items from the database, all that stuff. But it's not going to be able to uh, create users and do other kind of crazy administrative stuff we probably don't want to have, we don't want to have access to. Okay, grant all privileges to the database. Actually, I wonder if I can just check this. Um, I'm curious. For now, I'm just going to have this one checkbox checked. So let's see if just checking grant all privileges on database WP is enough for us. Leave the rest of this kind of default. That actually might be what we want to do. Just go ahead and click go. Okay. And we'll see if these are the right permissions. Kind of looks like it already did. Yep, it just did essentially what I did, plus lock tables and references. All right. So now I'm going to go and go to WordPress.org. And if you go to Get WordPress, I'm going to get the link to that zip file. And now I'm going to head back to my server. I'm going to make a dir called uh, wp, move into wp, and I'm going to w get over that zip file for WordPress. Now I can unzip the WordPress zip. Unzip is it installed, really? I don't think 
that's what I want to run. Eh, maybe it is unzip. Okay. Of course, I have a typo. Unzip. There we go. And as you can see now, there's another subdirectory called WordPress. And this is where our application actually is. This is a little bit sloppy. Um, I could fix this, but again, for sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna leave this as is. Now, if I were to go to my website, go under my WP folder, the WordPress directory, we can now uh, install our WordPress application. So let's go, database name, it's name just WP, username, WP, uh, password is right here. If I can highlight correctly. Paste that in. I like that's how, how that's in clear text like that. <laughs> and submit. And boo, we get a permissions issue. So this is still an okay sign. Um, it just means that WordPress doesn't have permissions to execute this query. We can either change the permissions on our server, or what we can do is literally just copy this file into a new file called wp-config.php. So let's go over here. Paste that in, save the file, and then run the installation. And we can put some information on here. So I test uh, WordPress, jschultz39. Sure, I'll do that password. WordPress. And now if I can log in as jschultz39 and the password. Ta-da! And isn't that awesome? So WordPress is installed. And I'm just going to note this down in case I ever want to get back in here. And yeah, this is a full-blown WordPress, so it's that easy to install your first web application. And if I go back to phpMyAdmin, uh, you'll see now that there is a ton of different uh, tables that were created, and it's pre-populated with a lot of that sample WordPress stuff. You can make your own database too. Uh, again, if I go back to new up here now, this is a button that works because I submitted those permissions. I can call something like, you know, test app. And I can go through and create tables, rows, all that stuff. So I can do users, say go. Um, I can say, you know, like, okay, I want a primary key, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, I'll do, I'll do a second video on creating, uh, creating your first table and things to look out for and all that fun stuff. But this is just for uh, a fun demo for today. So there you go. You have installed PHMA Admin. I showed you how to get dirty and install WordPress and all the other awesome stuff. So I'll talk to you later.